in example number one were asked to differentiate the sine of theta times the cosine of theta, of course, with respect to the variable theta. So <clears throat> your book it doesn't write these parentheses in here to show that it's a function because it's understood, but I think it's good practice to write these, these parentheses, right? These guys right here and these guys right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative with respect to the variable, which is theta, of sine theta times cosine theta. So we notice here that we have got two different functions. So we're going to go ahead and use the product rule, which says that we take the derivative of one of the functions times the other function plus the derivative of the function we didn't take over here and then of course multiply that by the other function. Derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So the derivative of sine which we've just gone through, the derivative of this is cosine. So we're going to have to multiply that by cosine. So this this guy right here is this. This guy just got dropped down. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here, the derivative of cosine um, is going to be negative sine. And we'll, of course, we'll multiply, multiply that by sine. And so this ends up being, now this right here is this, and of course, this guy right here just got dropped down. So this is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and work on part B. Oops. <clears throat> so B says we need to differentiate sine squared theta. So this right here is really sine theta times sine theta. So what we need to do is differentiate with respect to theta, our variable, sine theta times sine theta. So again, we've got the product, so we'll go ahead and we'll use, we use these rules, <clears throat> the rule that we just used above, so our product rule. And so that says we take the derivative with respect to our variable of the first function, multiply that by the second function, then add the derivative of the second function times the first function. I'll show you another way of doing this in just just a minute. So this, if you notice, I've got the same thing twice. So this is really 2 times d d theta sine theta times sine theta. And the derivative with respect to theta of sine theta is cosine theta. So this is going to be 2 cosine theta times sine theta, just like that. Now another way of thinking about it, so we'll call this guy right here way 1, and we'll call this guy down here way number 2. So another way of thinking about this is if we want to differentiate sine squared theta, We can think about this. Remember, sine squared is really sine times sine, so it's going to be. No one writes it like this, but really what it is is sine theta squared. Like that. And now, if you use your chain rule and you let this guy in here be u, if we say let's let u 
be equal to sine theta, then this guy becomes dd theta of u squared. Now u is a function of theta, okay? So we're gonna differentiate this. I gotta change this variable down here so that it matches this guy up here. So I'm gonna do that like this. I'm gonna say this is du d theta times ddu of u squared. So we're using the chain rule here. Okay, so now du d theta comes from this guy right here. So du d theta is the derivative of this guy with respect to theta, which we know is just cosine of theta. So this first guy du d theta is equal to cosine theta. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Now we need to multiply it by d du of u squared, which is just 2u. But u <clears throat> was equal to sine theta. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So this is equal to, I'm going to bring the 2 out front, so 2 cosine theta sine theta. And so notice that we got the same, the same value, one doing it with the product rule, the other way doing it with the chain rule. Okay, let's take a look at B, or excuse me, C. Now C is the sine of five times the angle theta. So dd theta of sine five theta. I'm gonna use the chain rule here. And so I'm gonna let u be equal to five theta. So this becomes d d theta. Let me write it in, we'll color code it here for you. So if we color code it, then this becomes the sine of u. Now, <clears throat> we don't know the derivative d d theta of sine u until we go ahead and do the conversion here. So d d theta, as the chain rule suggests, that's equal to du d theta times ddu of sine u. And now du d theta comes from this guy right here. So the derivative of u with respect to theta is just five. So that's gonna go right here on this guy. So this will be equal to five times d du of sine u. And so d du of sine u, we know is cosine u. So this is five cosine u. What is u? Well, u is five theta. So this is five cosine of five theta, just like that. Okay, now let's look at d. So d asks us to differentiate the sine of three theta over cosine theta, whoops, plus theta to the fourth power. So let's go ahead and differentiate that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a couple rules here at the same time. The first rule I'm gonna use is going to be the um, quotient rule. So the quotient rule says that I take the bottom times the derivative of the top. Let's do that in a different color. Now times the derivative of the top. So d d theta of sine 3 theta. So I'm going to come back and I'll get that guy. Then we need to subtract off. This is going to get real big. Let's um, let me just rewrite that down here, and I'll try to save some space. So 
So low d high minus the high. times the derivative of the bottom. So d d theta of this guy right here and then that whole thing is over the bottom squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through this. Well, this guy we're just going to rewrite him. Now, the derivative of this guy, if you go back and you look at the example I just did, we would use, it's, it's very similar to this, we would go ahead and use the chain rule. So essentially, we just take the derivative of the inside and multiply it by the derivative of the outside. So what it'll be is it'll be th 3, and then I need the derivative because that's the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the whole thing, the, the outside portion, pretending that this guy is not there, would be cosine 3 theta. So this is the derivative of this. So you should go ahead, and just like I did in this last problem right, right up here, you should verify that, that the derivative of this is this. Okay, now let's subtract off sine 3 theta times the derivative of this. So we're gonna, there's addition between two functions, so I'll take the derivative of the first function plus the derivative of the second function. So it'll be this guy times. Now the derivative of the first function is negative sine theta, and the derivative of the second function is 4 theta cubed. And then of course this is still over cosine theta plus theta to the fourth squared. So now when we get to this point, we're, there's really not a whole lot more that we can we can do. We can try to put guys together if we want to, and I, I guess that's what I'll what I'll do here. So this is going to be, but it doesn't. This one doesn't clean up. Sometimes they do clean up nice. This one doesn't look like it's going to clean up nice. So this will be three cosine theta times cosine. 3 theta. Now I can't put this guy and this guy together because they're the cosine at different angles. Okay, so we're stuck there. Um, plus 3 theta to the fourth cosine 3 theta, like that. And then we've got a negative times a negative, so that's a positive. These angles are different, so we'll write it as sine theta times sine 3 theta. Again, these angles are different, so I can't put these guys together unless I use some kind of property, which um, honestly is not worth worth doing, or, or maybe even possible. Okay, And then minus 4 theta to the third times sine this guy times this guy. And that's all over cosine theta plus theta to the fourth, that guy squared. And there's really not a whole lot that we can do with this. So this ugly mess right here is the derivative of what we originally started with.